Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. You know, recently I've been having issues with my internet service provider, uh, just having real spotty coverage and several outages, sometimes several per day. And I decided to go back and reinstall the speed test Docker container that I had done a video on uh, months and months and months ago. And for whatever reason, could not get it to work. Um, so I don't know if maybe I was just having a bad day or if the image was broken or something. I don't know, but I did some research and I found a new Docker container speed test uh, setup that I wanted to share with you guys um, because there are things about it that I really, really like. Um, so let's just jump over to my desktop and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are on my desktop and we can see that this has been running for a little while. Um, this is speed test tracker. And uh, just to kind of run through this, at the top here, uh, you can see that you can manually uh, perform a test. Uh, one was actually just uh, completed about a minute ago. Uh, I like that it shows when the last test was performed. I dig that. Uh, the ping over here on this first column uh, shows what your current ping was on your last test, uh, what your average ping is, uh, as you know, an average of all of the different tests that you've done so far, uh, you've got a maximum and a minimum below that. Uh, and then right over here is a chart uh, that kind of visually uh, shows that here's that big 40 uh, millisecond ping. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, I, I 10 to 15 seconds. In fact, I think the highest one besides that was 13. So not too bad. Uh, the next column over, we've got our downloads, uh, you know, with, uh, again, uh, what, our, what our last test was, what our average is, maximum and minimum. And, and that is, uh, shown right here in this yellow uh, this yellow line graph here. And then over here on the right side, all the way over, we've got upload speeds. Again, uh, most recent average maximum and minimum. And then that's kind of this blue line right down here. Uh, my uploads are pretty consistent at about 40 megabits per second. So that line isn't really going to be terribly exciting unless something goes wrong. If we scroll down a little bit, we actually kind of get a day by day um, uh, uh, chart here. Uh, sorry, just having a moment there. Uh, here we can see it's run 10 speed tests so far this morning. Um, and, and I'll show you how that you can manipulate that to run them whenever you'd like to run them. Um, besides just clicking on the, the test button there, there are there is a way uh, in the back where you can set up cron jobs um, that are very, very easy to set up. So, um, so that's kind of the homepage that kind of gives you a general idea of what's going on here. Um, oh, in fact, you can actually go back here and change this. How if you just wanted to show two days, uh, you can do that and it automatically updates. So that's actually pretty neat, but let's take that back to seven like so. And then let's come over, uh, let's go ahead and just close that out and take a look at the top right here. So we're on the homepage. Uh, over here next, we've got all tests. And here we can see uh, all of the uh, different tests that have been run this morning um, and all of the information uh, that goes along with that. Um, I think, yeah, so you can click that and you can get more information uh, as far as what server it hit, uh, where it hit, the host, the URL, uh, what type it was. And then if you wanted to, you could delete that uh, record out of the system if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that. Um, but so that's that's kind of this. Um, and then over here on settings, uh, there's some cool stuff in here. Like you can change the app name if you wanted to change that. You could, and that would reflect right up here in the top left. Uh, you can enable the scheduler. Uh, and what's cool about this is right here, you can use cron to like right now, this is set up to run every five minutes. Uh, but but if you wanted to run it, like say every 30 minutes, you could do it that way. Uh, you could manually put in your, uh, I guess before I go any further, uh, if you want to, in fact, it even shows right here, uh, this site can help with formatting. So if we click that, pop that open in a new tab, uh, here we can see uh, this is just a random run. This at 4.05 in the morning. So five minutes past uh, four o'clock in the morning, uh, every day, uh, every month, every year. Um, and so you can go in and you can change these values to come up with your own cron. So if you wanted to do something like, oops, wow, nope, darn it, there we go. Uh, every, or every minute, uh, past hour four. So from like midnight to four o'clock in the morning, it wouldn't do it. But then for every minute after that, it would do it. That would be kind of crazy. Um, <clears throat> but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is like a slash, oops, uh, like a slash 30. Nope, I did that wrong. I'm no good with cron, but you can make up your own cron in here and validate it and then come back over to here, paste it in there. That'll run every 30 minutes. In fact, oops, if I paste that in there. Here we can see uh, at every 30th minute. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it like that. Um, the server again, you can you so what you can do is manually put in what servers you want to ping uh, and do your tests from here. Um, 
below that, you can decide, do you want to show the average maximum? If you only want to just show uh, your maximum or minimum or just your average, uh, you can tick these boxes accordingly. Under graphs, uh, you can uh, decide what graphs you want uh, enabled, and then half width, full width, you can determine uh, what your interface looks like uh, by manipulating uh, these drop downs here. Notifications, now this is one of the things that I really, really like about this, and that is because this will integrate and send notifications every time a test is run. You can either uh, hook it up with Slack uh, using this first line, or you can get a, a bot token and a chat ID from Telegram and have it send you Telegram notifications uh, anytime a test is complete, and I really dig that. Um, <clears throat> so below that, <clears throat> See, test notifications. So if we had something in here and I clicked that, it would just send a little dummy notification to let you know it was working or not. Of course, if you don't get a notification, it didn't work. So that's how easy that is. Uh, speed test notifications turn on or off. Uh, over, overview notifications turn on or off. Uh, this would kind of give you a, a summary of the past 24 hours. Uh, so I kind of dig that. Um, so you can set your time to be 12 or 24 hour format. Um, if it drops below a certain percentage, uh, you can have it send you a notification as well. Uh, as far as download and upload, you can set what what's the minimum value that's acceptable. If it goes below that, you'll get a notification. It's the same thing with ping. If it goes over a certain, uh, certain point, you'll get a notification for that as well. Uh, so I really dig uh, what they've, what the, what, well, what Henry Whitaker 3 has done here. Uh, really good job as far as all of this is concerned. Um, health checks. Uh, if you wanted to have health checks enabled, uh, this is the URL you would use for that. And then you'd have to uh, go get a, a user uh, ID to put in there and test it, make sure everything's working. Uh, I'm not going to do that um, just because it doesn't make sense for how I want to set things up. But uh, please feel free to do that and, and take a look at that. Uh, reset, if you just wanted to delete everything, all your speed tests, take it back to stock, factory settings, whatever, uh, you can do that right here. Uh, if you got settings that you wanted to, to back up and, and migrate, you could do that as well. I kind of wish I had done that previously, uh, but you could back up uh, via JSON or CSV and you can restore uh, those same files that way. So now that we've seen what this app will do and how it works and how we can configure it, let's talk about how to deploy it. Uh, it's actually super, super easy to deploy. Uh, so let's come over to here, uh, right here again, this is uh, the Henry Whitaker uh, speed test tracker uh, over here on hub.ocker.com. This was updated less than three weeks ago. Um, so I'm guessing that he's just, you know, a dude working from home doing this in his spare time. Um, so, so kudos to him for that. Uh, he's got a demo site right here that we can take a look at. I mean, we've already kind of done this, but let's see. Uh, his ping, holy cow, uh, less than one millisecond. Looks like his uploads and his downloads are about 250 me uh, megabits per second. Uh, so pretty solid connection there. Looks like he had some failed tests. He had one failed speed test right there uh, back on the 23rd, so a week ago. Um, and then, so he's run seven speed tests so far today. Uh, so just to kind of show you what that looks like. Uh, and then if we scroll down a little bit, you can run this uh, through a, a Docker CLI or a command line interface uh, deployment. You could do it that way. Um, you could also do it this way, and that's how we're going to do it. Uh, right here, let's uh, let's actually take a look at this. Um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, this starts out as a version 3.3. If you're on uh, Portainer version uh, 2.1.1, this is absolutely fine. However, if you're on version 1.2. anything, or anything really anything less than 2.1.1, uh, you'll have to change this to two. Also, if you're on Portainer Business Edition, uh, I've got this uh, because I'm connected with Portainer and whatever. Uh, so I've got this just to kind of mess around with and test out. Uh, version three won't work in here because we're not on uh, version 2.1.1 yet. Uh, Business Edition tends to run about a quarter behind. Uh, so that should be coming soon. So like you can see here, I had to change that to two. In fact, while we're here, uh, nothing else in here has really changed. So let's, let's dig through it here. Our service is going to be speed test. Our container name is speed test. The image, like I said, we're going to pull this from Henry Whitaker three, his speed test tracker. Um, the, the port uh, is 8765 by default. You can change that to basically whatever you want uh, within range limits. Um, as long as you don't change this, you'll be fine. Uh, volumes, uh, I've gone ahead and mapped this uh, to, uh, to a specific folder on my server. Uh, in fact, if we come over uh, let's just let's just take a look at this. Oops, oops, mighty mouse, uh, like that. And let's get logged in. Okay, so here we are. We're logged in. So let's jump over here to shared 
folders right there. And then right here is that configs folder. If we take a look, it's SRV dev disk by UUID, and then all this craziness that the, 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 the Open Media Vault did because of some issues that they were having with hardware compatibility. Anywho, uh, so this, uh, this absolute path right here uh, is what I've got in uh, right here. Uh, and then of course there's configs attached to that that I missed. And then I put it in its own subfolder called speed test one. And we've just mapped that to their config folder. Below that, we've got some environmental variables here. Uh, <clears throat> for, so for time zone, I, I put mine close to Denver. Below that, we've got a, a PGID and a PUID. Uh, those are just identifiers for permissions. Uh, <clears throat> if you're not sure how to get that, uh, you'll need to get the admin account for your server. You'll need to get the user ID for that. So I'm using, let me close that. I'm using uh, Open Media Vault for my setup. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open up Putty. Okay, so here is Putty. Yes, I know. Uh, I know there's an ongoing gag, but I'm going to use Putty because I like it. Um, oops, that's not what I meant to do at all. Uh, what I want to do here is actually make this a little bit bigger. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me change my settings and let's bring this up to here. I know that uh, yeah, some of you guys have, have uh, pointed out that sometimes that 10 points real hard to see. So let's make it 16 point instead. There we go. All right. So, um, in order to log into uh, my Open Media Vault uh, account here, uh, I had to log in as the username admin. So that's what I'm gonna get the ID for. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just type in ID admin, and then that will give us our UID or PUID right here. That's 998, and my GID is 100. So if I come back over to here, uh, we can see you, did I do that backwards? Did I, did I, did I? UID, I sure did. Let's uh, let's make that, whoops, let's make that 100. And let's make that 998, there we go. Um, so see, this is this is why we do these things is because sometimes uh, sometimes I get my, my U's and my G's backwards apparently. So below that we've got um, uh, a Eucla, or, uh, an Eucla, uh, Eula GDPR just saying, yeah, I agree to your, your privacy stuff. That's what the GDPR is there. And we're just saying, yep, I agree to that. Our logging, instead of using a database like the other system that I showed in the past does, this uses a JSON file. Um, and that's just kind of what's going on here. Uh, we're just saying, hey, we're gonna use this JSON file as our driver. Uh, our max files will be 10, max size will be 200K. So it shouldn't take more than two gigs of storage based on what I'm thinking. It's early and I'm still in my first cup of coffee. So. Below that, we're gonna restart always, and uh, then that's it. So once you've got all of this set up for your system, again, uh, you could probably leave this as 3.3, .3, like so, if you're on version 2.1.1, but I'm not, so I'll leave that as two. Once you've got all this in here, you can go ahead and click on the little blue button right here that will say deploy the stack. Of course, mine's already running, so it says uh, update the stack, but once you do that, um, you, your speed test will deploy. But let's come over here to images just real quick. Let's take a look. The Henry Whitaker speed test tracker uh, is 368.6 megabytes for that image. Just so you know, uh, less than 400 megs there. And if we come over here to our stats, uh, here you can see a bunch of stuff that happened uh, in order to get things set up. Darn it, let's, uh, let's turn that off. So, well, when, when you click deploy the stack, I always like to go look at the logs and watch what it's doing, uh, just so I can see if there's anything crazy going on or whatever. And you should see some stuff that looks very similar to this. Hopefully what you'll see uh, is this migrating stuff here. Uh, and then once it gets all the way down through all of that, uh, you should get down here where it says services.d done. Once you're at that point, uh, you can come back and you should be able to uh, click on published ports over here and go right there. And then that should come up. If it doesn't, if it takes you to 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 colon 8765 or whatever, uh, jump over here to your uh, to your endpoints, go to local and change, th th it's because uh, this right here is empty. Uh, so just go ahead and either put in your, uh, your local address or your IP address or whatever you use to access your server. Put that in there, click update the endpoint, uh, and then you can come back over uh, to your container and click uh, this publish ports there and it should bring you right to where you want to be. So that's how to set up uh, Henry Whitaker's uh, speed test tracker. I really do dig this one. It's easy to set up. Uh, it's got a lot of great features. It's lightweight. 
great. Uh, just overall super, super impressed with it. And this will be staying on my server for the foreseeable future. So let me know in the comment section if this is something that you would use. Also, uh, if you if you don't wanna do that, if you just wanna give the video a thumbs up because this is something you would use, that would be amazing as well. Uh, so yeah, if you would do that, that'd be great. Also, I'm trying to release content like this regularly. Uh, so if you're interested in this kind of content, whether it's talking about you know deploying containers or talking about home servers, home networking, uh, self-hosting, that sort of thing, definitely get subscribed. I know only about a third of my viewers are actually subscribers. So uh, if you're interested in this, definitely get subscribed. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, all of the links you'll need to all of this will be in the description down below uh, where you can jump over to hub.docker.com and deploy this. I'll put a link to the cron over there as well so you can check all of that out. Also, while you're down there, there's a couple of options on how you can support the channel, whether it's through being a channel member or a patron. Uh, all of that is below this video as well. I wanna give a big shout out to my channel members and my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you for your continued support. Really does mean a lot to me that you guys are willing to support me with everything crazy going on right now. So thank you guys very, very much. But with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.